There we go. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good morning, Facebook family. Welcome to the Angel and Tina Morning Show. How was your weekend? Good morning. Yeah, good morning, everybody. It's Angel and Tina with our guests, Adam and Warren, here with us this morning. My weekend, my weekend was quiet. I did not work. Did you put your phone down the entire weekend? Pretty much, mostly. Oh, good. Mostly, yeah, yeah. It, now that's a first in six weeks that I have first for for the weekend, and it's it's been like baby steps. It's been my my pandemic goal to get to a place where where I wouldn't work when I wouldn't work on the weekend. So I did. I were I didn't work this weekend. So I'm so I proud of myself. I didn't work hardly at all this weekend. I did a lot of um, relaxation and everything. But I'm so excited about today because we have two guys on our show. And I think this is the first time we've had two men on our show. Well, like it's a banner day. It's a banner it day. Is. It Adam, is. Adam, how are you today? I'm, I'm doing awesome. Thank you so much for the invite. Uh, we're super glad to have you. How about you, Warren? Doing great. Yeah. All yeah. right. So, so where's everybody coming in from? Where are you coming in from, Adam? So right now I'm in London and uh, it's a bit of a, a time difference, but I'm, I'm, you know, fantastic to connect. And, so yeah, if you guys great. hear me speaking in my English accent, you know <laughs> why, because, you know, I've been talking to Adam all day. I think Adam I've got a little Jersey in there too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's little... quite, the, quite the combo. Right. right. <laughs> what time, what time is it there, Adam, right now? So right, right now it's 3, 3 p.m. So uh, early oh. afternoon. Okay, so at least it went the other way, like you're ahead of us instead of seven hours behind us. Yeah, it's exactly. been the middle of the night, right? Yeah, it's 8 a.m. here. How about you, Warren? Where are you at? I'm in Houston, Texas. Um, it's 9, it's, yeah, it's 9.01 a.m., so it's good here. Oh, right. good. Yeah. So right. we have a couple of different time zones here. Right, 8, 9, 10. And I love how we can all bring all the time zones together all the time. We're global. We're, We're just global. global. <laughs> are global. The Angel and Tina show have now has now went global. <laughs> we've had we've had a few international yes. international folks visit us, and so it's kind of been fantastic. So the morning show started out of the pandemic of uh, just a bright start to your morning, a way that we could all be connected in ways that. We weren't being connected thanks to technology. And y'all know we've had many mornings where we've struggled with the Zoom and the stream and the live and and you two play nice together. So we're super grateful on this Monday morning um, to, to be streaming live to you here yeah. on Facebook. So happy and if Monday. you have missed any of the Angel and Tina morning show, you can always go to Angel or my YouTube channel and watch all of the episode episodes, episodes. Sure. What do they call shows? Episodes? All the all the shows. All the shows. All, all the, the shows. Podcasts, all episodes. Yeah, you know, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Season season one of the Angel and Tina Morning Show. Yeah, at least I stopped calling it our radio show for a while. I kept I kept calling it the radio show because I used to host radio and yeah, now it's TV. Now we're all live. So yes. all right. So gentlemen, are you guys working during during the pandemic? Harder, less, smarter? What's going on? Talk, catch me up. You go yeah. first, Warren. Okay. Oh, um, so yeah, I just a lot of um, the same, but online. So just taking things virtually. Um, I've you know worked from home since around 2013, so it wasn't too much of a shock uh, for me. Um, it was just um, you know figuring out, kind of pivoting a lot of the brands that I was working with and saying, okay, how can we do what you did online? Or, you know, how can we, you know, just pivot, you know, what you're doing to be sensitive to what's going on right now, but also at the same time, you know, have you guys not be, you know, bleeding, <laughs> you yeah. know, revenue right now. So I would say, I would say working smarter um, in the sense where it's just working leaner, smarter, um, and uh, being really sensitive to the issues that are going on. Are you, are you enjoying the quarantine? Um. Am I enjoying it? I wouldn't say I'm enjoying it, uh, but it's definitely just like, you know, it's a new normal, right? So uh, it's just, um, I've always been just like, let's figure it out, you know? Right. And uh, so that's kind of what I've been up to. The Angel and I are kind of enjoying the quarantine. We're kind of enjoying not having to travel and move and go and go and go. So we're kind of, mm -hmm. we're kind of enjoying the quarantine. What about you, Adam? Are you enjoying the quarantine? I think enjoying is a strange 
were to use purely because you know you, you see the stats every day like people are dying but i mean i i personally i think i'm quite adaptable so you know i quite you know i quite like change and that kind of stuff yeah. so yeah that that's that's been that's been fine for me i i quite uh i quite like it i like the change and uh yeah it's been busier than ever it's been awesome. are, are you are you able to um are you able to like are you working harder? Are you able to have some boundaries around when you're working and, um, or are you just like working nonstop around the clock? <laughs> so for me, I'm quite fortunate because my, my office is, is literally a two minute walk from my house. So I have that kind of physical boundary. So I can, even though lockdown, I can still kind of get to the office. Um, but normally there'd be about, you know, 25 people here. They're all working from home. So it, it's kind of weird being in an office with no one around, but at the same time, I like it because I know when I'm in work mode and I know when I'm in home mode. So I, I like the, the physical boundary. Like it, it is nice. Yeah. So I've been working in my house, right. Obviously during this whole time. And for the first really five or six weeks, it was round the clock nonstop because, you know, it's just access and I'm here and it's so easy. And, um, and so we had to put in, we had to put in boundaries. We had to create, yeah. We had to create those boundaries. So for me, not working this weekend was this huge little checkmark milestone. But um, but my husband wasn't here because he's helping my daughter's move this weekend. It's just me and my son. And um, trying to like stay occupied, like there were a couple of times during, I'm like, well, what do I do now? Were you <laughs> bored? I wasn't bored. It was just like, well, okay, I have to come up with what's next because there isn't anything scheduled. Did you binge watch anything? <laughs> I I didn't. I did it. I'm not a binge watcher. I'm not. I'm not a big TV. I can't. I just can't sit still. I'm not a like just sit around and and you know I'll do it in the evening for a couple of hours, but I can't. I don't know. I think it was my mom. My mom like if, if you have time to lean, you have time to clean, right? Like, <laughs> I, I love that. What did she say? If you have time to <laughs> lean. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? We got to hashtag this. Hashtag angel, no, angel's mom nuggets. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so, right. You can't just sit around and watch TV during the day. You There's chores to be done and projects. And, right. and, and so if you've got time to lean, you've got time to clean and you've got to get up and do something. I, and so like, I, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to be watching TV, I've got to be folding laundry mm -hmm. or, cleaning out my closet or organizing so like you you can't just have the tv on and be sitting yeah. during the day i think that was just i did do point. that this weekend i went and and got all of my summer clothes and packed away all my winter clothes unpacked my summer clothes and my summer shoes <laughs> and my summer handbag <laughs> so i was able to organize my closets and do all that i love i think that's a um a thing that i love to do that a lot of people hate to do is organize your closets. I love doing it. I love organizing my that's, closets. And that's how I relax. Yeah, I it love, is. Me too. I clean out my closet. That's that's how I relax. Okay, that's really weird. All right, Adam, do you clean? Do you organize stuff? I hate I hate both of those. I do it <laughs> <laughs> because I have to, but um, it's definitely not what I do for fun. Um, that's uh, yeah, that's definitely not um, my my idea of relaxation. <laughs> What is, what is your idea of a relaxation day? My, for relaxation for me is lifting heavy weights. It's, it's going for a walk or a run in countryside. Yeah, see, that's not relaxation for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, you know, I've, I've been, that, that's the one downside for me of lockdown is the, you know, no access to the gym. So, um, you know, I've been doing, you know, I, I've been binge watching a few different things. I've, uh, I saw a recent thing called Tales from the Loop, a new thing on Prime and uh, Vikings. And I just sit on a spinning bike, so I'm kind of doing exercise while I'm watching. So, you know, you're, you're, that's it. Yeah, no. So, Peloton. <laughs> dovetailing, dovetailing. Two, two things, one, one go. So. Yes, yes, right. So as long as you're, you know, by riding a bike, you can, can watch. See that my mom would be so proud of you, and she'd be, <laughs> and probably it's not quite because there's no benefit to her for you riding your bike. You should be like folding socks or something like that while you're doing it. But at least, at least points. How about you, Warren? Do you, uh, do you like to clean and organize while you watch TV? And uh, 
I, t I have, um, you guys know, well, I run Octonation, right? The largest octopus fan club. And we have a community of over 400,000 people. So with them, I'm constantly like moderating um, or like getting in the comments, figuring out where people are, where they're at, um, you know, doing giveaways, campaigns with different like people or like reaching out uh, to more collaborators. So I guess I would say kind of like work stuff. It doesn't feel like work just because, um, it's, you know, online, sometimes it's on Instagram, it's on Twitter, it's connecting, but um, I'm always like scheming for the next uh, campaign or collaboration with Octonation. So I'll be like, just sitting there and being like, oh, you know, what would be a fun thing to do? Or who should I, we collaborate next? Or, you know, could we get Nature PBS to do something and figuring out, okay, well, who, who runs their thing and you know, trying to get in contact with them and making something happen. So um, yeah, it's always like community uh, management or moderation on my end, even though that's probably something I should have my community manager be doing. <laughs> <laughs> You're so creative, right? You're so creative and and thinking of those things. So you just on your phone like most of the time, or yeah, do you have yeah, I have my, I have my phone and my laptop, so you know it's just uh, listening to music like on YouTube, like um, just like ambient you know style music, and then um, moderating, you know, or figuring out who, who's care your, next. taking care of your children down there yes yes my um my I, she, this, I, this one right here oh. huge child <laughs> yep <laughs> oh my goodness he's so cute he's so cute will he pose for the camera he does uh, he's quite he, photogenic oh yeah for sure oh well, fabulous. Well, we're so glad you guys are, are here with us this morning. We're going to introduce you each. We'll do a little interview with you, Adam. We'll start with you this morning um, to let our audience get to know you just a little bit better and, and uh, you know, bring some of that, give Tina a chance to listen to your accent. <laughs> <laughs> so I can work my English accent. Absolutely. Well, Adam Cox is a clinical hypnotherapist based in London's Harley Street, specializing in phobias, weight loss, addictions, and health. Oh, and I just kind of gave you mine, right? He's the creator <laughs> of the Hypnotic Wealth System and host of two iTunes charting podcasts, Modern Mindset and The Hypnotist. Adam, we're so glad you're here this morning. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you. Okay, so now that we're all in this, um, this you know, quarantine and self-distancing, how are you pivoting and staying? Are you able to do the, all that you do with the mindset and the hypnosis and all of that virtually? Yeah, I mean, um, Zoom has, has been, I think for most people, it's been, you know, uh, used way more now than it, it kind of ever was before. So although normally in a therapeutic environment, it's good to kind of be face to face with someone because you can kind of build rapport. Um, but for, you know, much, much easier, but for the last kind of two or three years, um, because I'm, you know, quite well known as a, as a phobia expert, I get clients from all around the world and, you know, obviously I can't work with them face to face anyway. So I kind of had practice at kind of working with people over zoom, you know, it helps to have like a good microphone and a good camera and things like that. So you're not kind of there with a shaky mobile phone or a kind of, uh, you know, rubbish webcam. Um, so I'd kind of had that experience and all it meant is that I was just doing that a lot more. Um, but there was still gaps. So I kind of decided, you know, I could sit around doing nothing or I could launch a second podcast. So, um, that was really the, the idea of, uh, taking all those kind of hundreds and hundreds of kind of clients that I saw and being a bit of an audio geek, you know, I love good quality audio and microphones. So every hypnosis session I've ever done. I, I recorded that so I could send it to the client afterwards so they could hear their hypnosis session. Uh, and then I kind of thought, well, I could create a podcast where people can see behind the scenes of kind of real hypnotherapy sessions. So, I mean, it's completely confidential. You never know who the client is, but I kind of explained a bit about what their issue is and how I use clinical hypnotherapy and, and CBT and other psychological uh, tools to help them reach a resolution and then you actually hear the live session that they experienced. So that, that, that's the premise of the show. That's um, really cool. And um, yeah, it, it's been, it's been really popular and had really good feedback. Um, and then I thought, you know, there's ways that I can kind of innovate even more. So I've been looking at how can I take celebrities or kind of well-known people um, or even, you know, the storylines of TV shows and turn that into new hypnotic patterns or protocols uh, just to kind of keep me on my toes and, and give me new stuff to work on. So, you know, 
I, I would kind of agree with Tina. I'm, I'm kind of, I don't want to admit it, but I'm kind of enjoying the quarantine because it's giving me a bit of additional time to pursue projects that prior to what happened, I wouldn't be able to do. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, during this, like, what else am I going to do? I'm going to start a podcast. Like, that's right. so entrepreneurial, right? To say, well, let's. That's how the Connect on. Summit started. We, you know, we just kind of jumped in there. We wouldn't have been able to do that. We wouldn't have been able to start the talk show, you know, or the okay. Connect Summit or any of these virtual summits that we are all doing right now. So I think, I think, yeah, I think. This is the so, new Adam, thing. what is the most common phobia? The most common phobia is that, that people see me for is spiders, definitely. Spiders? Um, spiders, really? yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, there are, I mean, there, there are probably more common phobias. So many people are afraid of public speaking. That's what um, I would think number one would be. Yeah, but, but most people, the number one tool to deal with a phobia is avoidance. You just simply don't do that thing. So, I mean, there's a fairly small percentage of, of people that have clown phobia. It's called cholerophobia. Um, but I, I, you know, I've seen like two clients in my entire career with cholerophobia because the easiest way to manage clown phobia is not to see clowns, you know, you just avoid it. So with, with kind of public speaking and, and, and that kind of stuff, a lot of people will just, um, find excuses not to do that. Whereas with spiders, you can't find an excuse because the spiders get in your home. Uh, and particularly in England, I don't know if it's the same in the States, but, um, September, October, spider breeding season there's a lot of additional spiders in the houses uh and 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 i do big workshops and there might be 20 30 people there that have had lifelong spider phobias and at the end of a few hours they're holding like a massive tarantula you know they're they they've you know held a house spider they're completely oh, I over there i don't think there. i could do that yeah i don't, well, I don't is... like the creepy crawly <laughs> things either but i don't not that i'm a scared of not that i'm scared of i just don't like them but I yeah. couldn't hold a tarantula. So is that right. like required? Like if if that's what you're afraid of, like do you, because you always see them, like do you have to hold the spiders at like the graduation of, because I don't know the people who are not afraid of spiders who go around holding spiders, right? Yeah, but, that, right? That, that, that's kind of what makes it work because, you know, if someone that has spent their whole life being terrified of fairly small house spiders, if they can do something that someone that isn't even afraid of spiders couldn't do, then it's what it's what we call the convincer strategy. Um, so you do something so far outside of the comfort zone that when you return to normality, it's very hard to be afraid of that house spider when you have that memory of holding a massive tarantula. So it's the law of contrast, but it's equally creating a new belief system that they can do things that they didn't think that they could do. Um, so, uh, you know, Tina's over there having Tina's... convulsions. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> like, I yeah. can't do it. I can, I could not hold, you know, remember that show with a it's fear like a factor, <laughs> fear factor or something oh, that you had yeah. to like sit there with all the spiders. I couldn't do that's it. Oh my God. That. That's just it. gross. That's just, yeah. Anything in abundance. I remember one time going to this place and there was, it was up in the mountains and there had to have been 5 million ladybugs. Now, ladybugs don't freak you out, but when you see them in such massive quantity, and they were everywhere, it was like, okay, now this is this is kind of creepy, but wow! Okay. All right, that's pretty cool, Adam. How did you how did you get into this field? Yeah, it's a strange one. So, I mean, I, you know, I'm I'm fairly confident now, and I do a lot of things that you know require me to go outside of my comfort zone. But uh, when I was a teenager. I had such severe anxiety. I was a recluse for a number of months. I wouldn't leave my apartment. Um, and, you know, the idea of, you know, going out and doing things outside of my comfort zone, you know, that gave me genuine like heart palpitations. You know, I literally created a prison of my own making inside my own head because of my thoughts about potential consequences. So, you know, that set me on a journey. I was doing a psychology degree at the time, and then I would spend, you know, the, the time to research about anxiety, about what caused, you know, panic attacks, things like that. So effectively, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for it now because it enables me to do what I do. But actually, it was a very, um, you know, kind of uncomfortable time that kind of forced me to kind of fix myself. And then when you do that, you kind of realize that there's still a lot of people that are in the place where I was. And then now I'm in a position to kind of help them. And, and it creates a lot of empathy because a lot of people are ridiculed for their phobias i worked with a a mixed martial artist a cage fighter a british champion that had a fear of balloons um and he told me he said like nobody can know about this fear because 
it would be used against him. And I think a lot of people with phobias have had pranks played on them. They've been ridiculed based on their fears. Yeah. So people are very nervous to share even that they have a phobia because uh, it puts them in a very vulnerable position. So for me, having had such severe phobias myself, you know, I had a fear of public speaking. I had a fear of heights. And then, you know, for me, what I found is if you tackle what represents the most extreme version of that. So if you've got a fear of heights, you know, I did a skydive. I had a fear of public speaking, you know, and I, and I spoke in the Savoy Hotel in London to an audience of 500 people. That's how I got over my phobia. Um, and, and, you know, once I've gone through that, it creates an element of an understanding between me and my client that, you know, I know where they're coming from because I've, I've been there and I've, I, I know the panic attacks and I know the severe anxiety. So that's kind of where it all came from, really. Wow, that's so interesting. I can't believe people can still, oh. <laughs> so she's like, oh, uh, oh, I can't okay, do so, it. So Adam, when's your next workshop? We're gonna sign Tina up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's difficult Y'all to have my coffee out. <laughs> that's the problem we can't do that virtually um but yeah if you're ever in uh, london you know we'll we'll give you a free ticket tina you can come on and okay uh, okay <laughs> we'll get you holding the, the biggest one the biggest one uh, there's a couple of big ones there's one um uh, called beyonce which is uh, a very very fluffy tarantula she's quite cute so you can you can hold beyonce <laughs> does she dance right how cute Not is really. that who named your spiders <laughs> Well, it's actually, it's actually all the, the single uh, ladies. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the business partner that I work with. So I, I kind of do all the psychology and the hypnosis kind of stuff. And, and she has a collection of like over 40 tarantulas. So she brings the, the tarantulas. I don't own any myself, but yeah, there's, there's no shortage of, of like, we're talking huge. I mean, we're talking like the biggest ones like this big, it's, it's ginormous. Um, so uh, yeah, but, but that helps, you know, because when they've held, like a, like a huge one. We're talking about, you know, spiders the size of kittens, you know, they are massive. And, and once you've done that, it's very difficult to, to go back to being scared of a house spider. Okay, Angel, we might have to go live on location in London because <laughs> this will probably be the most watched television show because I would, I would freak out. Would you freak out? You're, you're freaking like out. You're freaking you? out right now. Like just- I am. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, well, okay. So, so Adam, do you have an, an opt-in or a way that folks can get connected with you or where do we want to send them to? Yeah. So if anyone has a, a phobia or severe anxieties, the best uh, way to, to do that, I have a free video that if they go to phobiaguru.com, uh, they can download a free video all about why we have fears, why we have phobias and how you can get rid of them. And if anyone's interested to hear how I do hypnosis, uh, if you go on Apple Podcasts or any kind of podcast platform and just put The Hypnotist, uh, you're going to see my uh, see my show come up. Fabulous, fabulous. Well, we're super glad you're here. This is fascinating. Well, we're going to transition from speaking about one eight-legged creature to, to another eight-legged another creature. Eight-legged creature because we have more. That's so funny file. that we can do, we do this. This is oh god, <laughs> right? the largest octopus fan club online octopus fan club and i remember the first time i met warren and he told me that i thought i, I think i was confused i'm like is that a thing right and then it turns out it really is and of course you know he's wearing his octopus fan club t-shirt um i think my husband is the um he the wears, president of the fan club uh, he is the president of the fan club he wears his octopus fan club t-shirts all the time Ooh, i need an octopus fan club t-shirt <laughs> you are gonna need one right but but so in building this largest online fan club he has learned what it takes to build online communities he is a professional community building strategist and he's written and given presentations even for facebook headquarters so facebook saw what he is doing and they brought him and flew him in so that he could teach the whole world of facebook how to build online online communities octo nation is the largest octopus fan club a, a nonprofit organization that inspires conservation of the ocean by teaching the world about octopus this community has grown to well over 400,000 highly engaged members. See, they're like, there's, yeah, we have the numbers, but they're also highly engaged. And he's going to teach us and love to show us how we can do it too. I'm so glad. I have a, I have a quick question from an uh, uh, audience member. <laughs> <laughs> they said, is the plural of octopus octopuses or, oct or octopus? 
No, I, think, I think, Warren, if you were to have like a nickel for every time somebody asked you that, that would truly make you the millionaire. Yeah, for sure. And that's kind of like the um, we, whether you know whether or not like you're an OG uh, octopus fan or not. But the correct answer is octopus is because octopus is a Greek rooted word. Um, so it wouldn't take that Latin plural lending. That's uh, the quickest way to, I guess, give you the answer to that one. And it's funny that we're on with Adam because um, we're talking phobias, um, there's a, an irrational fear that people have. Um, and it, typically it starts young or um, uh, through a, an experience. But what we found with the octopus is that in Western culture for the past you know, 100 years through Hollywood movies and things like that, people have this idea of the octopus that's, oh my God, it's slimy, it attacks ships, it's aggressive, it's, it's malicious. And um, I remember you know, uh, learning about that and thinking, how could anybody think this story you know, about this animal? So I just decided kind of to retell, be a better PR agent for the animal and come in and start storytelling in a way that made it seem, no, these, these are highly intelligent creatures. They're ancient. They have superpowers. They, you know, depending on where in the ocean they live, they've, you know, they've adapted over hundreds of millions of years to thrive in their environment. Um, so just kind of storytelling in a way that gets people excited about the animal and completely changes the way that they view it. Um, and in some cases, you know, I've introduced people to an octopus, people that were originally um, afraid of one, um, and that is, you mentioned that is a quick way to get them over it. They're like, oh, wow, they're really curious. Wow, when they look at me, they, I almost feel like they're looking back at me and it's because they are, right? They have short-term, long-term memory and they can recognize individuals' faces. So when they're looking at you, they're learning who you are, you know, and they're saying, hey, uh, what's going on? <laughs> so they're really How interesting. How did you get into, into this? Did you have like, did you always love? Um, when I was a kid, I was, um, I remember being like five, you know, six years old and having this obsession with like aliens or extraterrestrial life. Um, just this idea that beyond, you know, this world, you know, or this planet, um, we, there could be something. And um, I remember when I was seven, actually going to the aquarium and seeing an octopus and thinking in my head, wow, that looks pretty alien-like. And then I remember asking the Aquarius there, you know, how, how can you tell how old it is? Or how can you do this? Or I, and she's like, well, science really hasn't figured out about this animal yet. And I was like, how is science not figured out about this animal, but it can figure out and just they're unlike any, anything that we have, you know, on this planet, they have a decentralized nervous system, which means, you know, their arms can make decisions without the use of their brain and stuff like that. And there, there's so many really cool things and fascinating things about them that science is still trying to figure out how they're able to do the things that they do. And so I remember um, just being obsessed uh, with that fact and then learning that there were over 300 different types um, of them. And I thought, wow, I don't know wow. if many people, I don't know if many people know that. And um, I definitely didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. And so I just started storytelling and, and saying, you know, here's this, you know, octopus, the sand, you know, octopus, it can't change color, but it can blow itself a foot underground, create a predator proof bunker, and then create a ventilation shaft with its arm and uh, then live underground for sometimes months at a time. So it's just like, you know, there's all these different storylines that people, when they start learning about them, they're like, I need to learn more. I need to learn more. Like, wait, there's another one. And like, yeah, and we're discovering more every single time we go down into the ocean. So wow. um, it's something that when people, when people start following our account, they can't help but engage and show up on a daily basis to see what we're going to share next. Wow. I know it is, it is incredible. And he has this incredible following both on Instagram and on Facebook, Facebook found him, discovered him. Well, they probably been watching him the whole time and said, <laughs> Hey, can you come to our headquarters and talk about how you built this online community? Because you do have something that is a fascinating subject, Warren, and, and unique, like it does, like, mm -hmm. it's not pretty common. It's not like, Oh, I built a, a community of coffee drinkers, but even for you, I know how you would, spin that and share those stories and, and, and create something pretty special about it. But you've created engagement and that yeah. is the secret sauce, I think, to building Facebook groups. People are starting groups left and right, but nobody's engaging with them. What's been your, like, what do you teach people on how to, how to, how to do that? Yeah, you um, with Facebook and they had me come out and I've, I've taught written for their blog and I've taught some of their power admins. And it's really, it comes down to um, people now that, you know, the TV isn't dictating um, where people's interests lie, you know, people can go and they can discover things that they've been interested in. You really need to figure out 
you know, what is, what are you going to put your stake in the ground, you know, and what are you really going to be known for? And it can't be um, a subjective um, thing. It can't be something that people um, can't manufacture out of their mouth. Like they can't actually say it. And so typically when I start with people, um, you know, getting clarity around, you know, what are you going to be known for when, when people are talking about you in a coffee shop, what words are actually coming out of their mouth to describe what you do? And, you know, how can we make sure that we're in control of that, that, that language, you know, from a brand perspective. So really it's like, it starts off with a who and a what, you know, who is the group for, or who is the community for, and what is this community about? And the more subjective those terms are, the more hard it's going to be for you to build a fanatical community, because you can't make the assumption that people are going to be interested in a, in a wide array of topics under, under something. Uh, and so, you know, I have, you know, Octonation, the largest octopus fan club, but I've worked with many, many um, people and we figured out, okay, what is that one thing? I, I worked with a life coach um, who came to me and come to find out she um, suffered chronic ability migraine ever since she was two. She has her PhD. And so after talking with her uh, for a couple of days, we finally decided she helps women who suffer chronic debilitating migraine get more stuff done throughout the day. And when we figured that out, who that community was for and what it was going to be about, we started plugging her into the National Headache Foundation, the Association of Migraine Disorders. I mean, you can go and, and you find out, okay, if this is what you're going to be known for. Who's currently catering to that community? And how do we, how do we knock this out of the park with um, um, identifying you to that community that you are the person that you know helps in this capacity? So it's really getting clear um, and not being like, I want to help all moms, you know, uh, live a better life. You know, it's just, it's too abstract. It, there's too much, too much competition. There's too much that's really abstract people. People are like, okay, cool. Good luck with that. But yeah. if there was something, yeah, if there was something more specific that you did or an experience that you had, if there was a specific transformational process that you had, then you really need to bring words to that so that other people that are just like that know that you can help them through this transition. And most people think at that point, they think, well, I don't want to pigeonhole myself. And it's not about pigeonholing. It's really getting a foothold uh, on, you know, a market and having people clearly and confidently recommend you to people who need your community. Um, and so, yeah, that, so that's kind of how I start, you know, that, that conversation is really figuring out what is that community going to be about and who is it for? I think that, you know, the fact that you, one, created uh, such a thriving community, Warren, but then we're able to, to put what was the system, what was the process, and now we're able to yeah. teach others to do the same thing, you know, has just taken it to, to an entirely new level. But I'm going to go back to when <laughs> the nation first came out. Like, at what point did it qualify? I mean, at what point did you know, like, I've got this large fan club? What was the number that you hit to say to, the, you know, just personally for you to say, yeah, this is something? So, I mean, even before that, um, not many people know this about me. Well, um, some, some do, not that many people do, but I was a studio manager for a celebrity fashion photographer in New York. And I learned uh, firsthand from the fashion industry how they were taking something like cloth and they were creating a storyline behind it. They, they um, associated that cloth with certain people or certain influencers. They, they built this storyline um, about, and they called them campaigns, you know, and it was always in the fashion industry, what's your next campaign? What's your next campaign? So when I started, um, I remember sitting in a room and hearing some CEO of a fashion brand talking. And I just re remember thinking, if he's doing this for this, I can do this for something that I'm passionate about. And essentially what, you know, make it relevant um, uh, in the market um, by who I associate this animal with and what I talk about, what values that this community has. And so I would say um, right from the very beginning, when I, when I thought, okay, who now is currently catering to somebody who's interested in this animal? I did a collaboration with Simon Montgomery, who was uh, the New York Times bestselling author of Soul of an Octopus. And this was at a time when I had close to like 40 people that were following the account. But at the end of the day, you have to, it doesn't matter how many followers you have to say, you have to say, am I bringing my community, no matter how big or, or small, the people that they would want to see and the content that they would just be like, wow, this is a legit um, club. So I'd say even from the very beginning, um, just because I, I don't really play small when I'm working with anybody is I was like, okay, what programming or content can I create that is going to completely um, validate or, or, or give me the authority to say that I am this thing. 
And uh, so I'd say very early on, uh, when, when I had less than 100 followers, I had the confidence of it's not about the followers. It's about what content am I creating? What assets am I creating with these these thought leaders that um, that make it so that I can say this and I can say it with a serious kind of face? Because when people hear it initially, they're like, oh, this is funny. This is this, this is that. But at the end of the day, we have, you know, parents that message us and say, you know, I watch Octonation every single night before bed with my kids. Um, you know, we have a lot of really fun stories that, that make it to where it's fun, but it's also a really serious um, um, thing that we're doing in the world, which is, you know, inspiring conservation of the ocean. So it's cool. Well, even me personally, and, and you know this, Warren, like, like, if you would have asked me about octopuses, like I had no, I had nothing, right? But mm -hmm. now, like I see them, I see artwork, I see signs, you've, you've just, tr you know, you give me these little triggers and, and we're, it's almost like we're looking, we're looking for them or I'm just aware of how, how often yeah. they're in my world. And I can't really turn it off too. Even when I was listening to Adam speak, I was building a community in my head of, okay, you know, what would this community be called? Like who, who is specifically to work with? Like what influencers out there currently cater to an audience that, you know, that talks about tarantulas or talks about spiders. Like my mind just is constantly thinking. I community, would not community, be community. the president of that fan club at <laughs> all. <laughs> but it was just thinking, you know, how can you, you know, create relevancy within a given demo with what you're doing right now? So it's always about finding people because we have the internet now. Um, if you have some weird thing you're interested in, or even if it's not weird, if it's just a fascination or an interest, odds are there's somebody out there right now that is catering to your perfect person. And so why, you know, constantly create content for no one? Why not collaborate all the time with these people that have these communities of people that have already, you know, identified as being interested in that topic or have that headspace to where they can entertain high level conversations? which is another thing that I come into contact with a lot, which is people that are like PhDs or are that talk up here and they're catering to a market down here. I'm like, there's a disconnect. Like you, you are, you are supposed to be having conversations with like people from like fortune 10 companies. You're not, you're not supposed to be direct consumer. So it's actually really helping them understand like where they're supposed to be and you know, who they're supposed to be talking to. Um, Cause odds, sometimes I'm just like, you're just talking to the wrong person. You're supposed yeah. to be up here and you're trying to convince the people down here to care about what you're talking about. <laughs> so you're telling, don't dumb yourself down for anybody. Yeah, for sure. No. <laughs> okay. So, so Warren, um, you got invited to Facebook. That's like, that's like Oprah. That's like the Oprah right? online building, you know, community builders, right? Like to, mm -hmm. to be able to get invited, describe that experience. So I would say that, you know, we were talking about manifestation earlier on um, and uh, um, our vision of Octonation is to become a global leader in marine wildlife education, conservation and research. And so when I think about that every single day, I think, OK, if my vision is to be the global leader, then I need to partner with organizations like Facebook um, to get my word to get the word out there and to have a conversation about this subject. So um, when Facebook started reaching out to me. I was like, okay, this is great. But I kind of positioned myself and positioned my community in such a way that um, they would reach out. You know, um, there's lots of different ways that you can kind of get on Facebook's radar. Um, there's a power admin group that's available. There's a lot of resources that Facebook has that you can complete and then let them know that you completed it. So it's just like kind of like keeping people in the loop with how you're using their products, programs, or services. Because people want to, people want to um, demonstrate how other people are using their their products, even if it's a software company, to um, to change the world, you know. And Facebook's you know mission is to bring the world closer together, you know, have meaningful um, conversations, um, and so uh, that's what Octonation does, you know, on a daily basis. Our engagement is out of this world. I mean, we have every single time we post, we have hundreds of comments, and um, and people really talking about it they're like not like this is cool or this is whatever but they they write paragraphs of content yeah. and so they were like how how are you making this happen and a lot of it is just you know if you want to facilitate conversation like that then you need to facilitate conversation and in a way that is um that that evokes people's curiosity that you know gets them talking and you have to intentionally do that with every single time you post and every single time you post you have to intentionally show up with your brand's core values when you work with anybody else, you have to intentionally choose people that you work with based on who they cater to and how they show themselves off to the market. So when Facebook brought, you know, brought me in and spotlit Octonation, um, they really were just like, hey, this is somebody who is um, showing up. This is a community leader who's showing up. 
uh, on a daily basis, um, uh, showing up in their core values, bringing the world closer together. And so they're definitely one to watch. And then, you know, I started just teaching how it's very intentional, how I community build and there's, you know, a system in which I do it. And it's definitely something that's repeatable. Um, obviously, if you're a talented community leader, um, you can do it. You just kind of have to put your ego to the side and start, you know, figuring out what does my community want and not what do I want to say every day, but what is my community actually asking for? Um, and how can I give them what they're asking for? Uh, it's not like what, you know, because a lot of people, what I see community leaders do is they wake up and it's a very emotional thing. Like, what am I feeling? I want to channel something through me today. What do I, you know, it has nothing to do with you. <laughs> you want, at the end of the day, you want people, you want viewers, you want people watching you, which means you need to cater to, you know, what, what they're interested in. Um, uh, and I, there is balance there, obviously, you know, you want to be true to yourself and your art. But there is, at the end of the day, you need to create a feedback loop with your community to where you're completely in sync. And they're just feeling like, wow, I don't need to go anyplace else because, you know, Warren or the community is bringing me everybody that I love around this topic. And uh, that's something that's like highly intentional when you're community building. Okay, so well, how that's do we a lot of good information you. for anybody yeah. to use. And you know what? Maybe that's how we got on Facebook Live this morning because Warren, Warren has a little push. He was like, you know what? Let them on. I'm going to be on. Let them get on live. <laughs> what were you saying, Angel? Warren, how do how do you want how do people find the find you? Do you want them to like your well? Because you only really want them to go to your fan club if they truly are fans of of Octopus, right? Yeah, but I um this past week I actually um um I was speaking in this virtual summit and I created a um like a, a, a page to where people could get more information. It's Octo Warren. <laughs> Um, so if you go to octowarren.com, Octo Warren. I like it. <laughs> um, you can download, I have this uh, PDF download on how to grow specifically it's for Instagram. Um, but a lot of it can be transferred to Facebook, but it's, um, but I talk about, you know, what are some five ways that you can grow or be discovered on Instagram for your community? Oh, awesome. 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 I have a question. Where can, where can I get one of those octopus t-shirts? Um, you can go, we have, um, right now, if you go to, um, what's it say, um, octopusfanclub.com, you can join our, uh, community. So it's just octopusfanclub.com goes straight to our Facebook community. And in our first pin post, we have all of our t-shirts there. <laughs> yeah, I definitely need to get one too. Awesome. No. Right. Getting to a place where you've got merchandise and people want to wear your logo. I used to. I used to talk about the, the customer experience and when you get to a place where um, where people want like want your logo, on, you know, on their clothes and they're naming their pets after you or right. They're wearing your brand. That's a that's a that's a big deal when people want to wear your brand on, right. their, and what's, on their body. What's funny, what's funny is in the beginning, I didn't have any um, I didn't have branded clothing. It was all just like uh t-shirts of like the actual animal or sayings or things like that because I did a survey and I asked you know what which one do you guys like more and none of them wanted the logo on their shirt it wasn't until maybe like you know two or three years in that people were just like yeah I, li I really like that one I really you know and so it's, it just goes to show you you can't be married to your you know just the fact that you think people want to advertise you or talk about it sometimes they just want something that's really cool or demonstrates their interest in a way that doesn't you know, uh, market you or, or the community. And so you have to be okay with that, you know? And so the, lots of times my conversations with community leaders are getting them out of their own way when it comes to the <laughs> ego. They're like, well, I've done this and I've done that. I'm like, okay, cool. What is the community saying? What do they want? Where, oh, the, where are they coming? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well, why is that? You know, I'm the, I'm the conductor. I'm like, no, you're a conduit. So they, they channel, you know, you, they go through you to, you know, to say, you know, what they want. And you have to listen to them a whole lot more or create those feedback loops. And when you start doing that, you start your engagement starts going through the roof because your community feels seen, heard. Um, they feel like they have a chance at being, you know, honored on the platform. So it's a whole lot of fun. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's fascinating. It's fascinating, both the octopus side and the whole idea of, of building our communities. And especially now, and you've seen this too, Adam, right? How we're, especially because we're all so reliant on our devices to stay connected for those that already had those pieces in place, probably like when, we, when this first kind of happened, I saw the engagement in my group. 
just go up exponentially. And it was an element of everybody being home and being and being on their devices. And so leveraging that and having that already in place. But then how do you see, I don't know, what do you, what do you see is going to come out? How are you going to, is business going to be different for you, Warren, after, after the pandemic, after the rollout? So I did a lot of campaigns around aquariums um, because, you know, our Aquarius, they're on the front lines of ocean conservation. So there's a match, there's an alignment with Oxygenation and Aquarium, but they all had to shut down due to COVID, you know, large groups of people, that's just not a thing for them. And you have some uh, aquariums and zoos trying to pivot where they, you know, some of them are like opening up and like letting cars drive through. I mean, not everybody can do that, but it's just really fascinating how they're trying to adapt to it because at the end of the day, there's a lot of animals that need to get fed. Um, and, uh, and some of them are hemorrhaging millions of dollars a month. Um, they still have all their staff members. It's not, you know, they can't go to a skeleton crew because they have all these animals everywhere at any given moment. And so what I started doing was just more awareness. So I started partnering up with aquariums and doing like, um, octopus 101, you know, with aquarium of the bay and doing fundraisers and, you know, just really, um, trying to, um, help them bring what they're doing in an online environment to teach them you can create um you know uh, awareness online uh you're just gonna have to do it more than you were doing it before and in, in more creative ways than that you were doing it and create you know curriculum or um guides or coloring sheets or all these different things to get people tuned in and um to keep your donors happy um until you can open up again and so a lot a lot of people are just like well you know maybe next month this will be over or maybe next week this will be over. I'm like, let's plan for, and this is just like, just me saying it. What if it was never over? You know, you know, how, do, how are we going to plan for that? And it's just making sure that like, they're not getting to this point in the conversation where they're just like, okay, well, this will be great for this week, but next week they'll be back to normal. I'm like, we need to like, we need a new normal right now. And it needs to be as powerful as if it was to never going to happen again. You just weren't going to. So what are we going to, how are we going to optimize for that? And so um, it's really, you know, having them pivot and think in creative ways and other teams think in creative ways. So I think, I think it, um, it's just taking everything and, and being really serious about community building online and making the assumption, um, you know, doing best of both worlds. Like what if, you know, what if we open up next week or what if we're never, yeah. yeah. Right. So planning you, for both. Adam, are you seeing, what do you see is going to be different for you coming out of, coming out of the pandemic? Yeah, I think, you know, for my weight loss brand, Hypno Slimming, you know, you see the memes on social media, you know, this is me before quarantine and then after quarantine. <laughs> I, think, I think people have accepted that people are going to be emotionally eating a lot. So I'm going to have a, a lot of weight loss clients. Um, and, and equally, I know there's going to be a lot of people with new addictions. You know, alcohol sales have gone up, uh, you know, screen time's gone up, you know, and, and a lot of people will have new addictions and then whatever the new normal is when they return to that then it's a case of well they're going to have to um you know deal with whatever the um legacy issues with whatever their behavior is of that you know quarantine period and and that might be you know there's a there's a a phobia of of germs for example you know that that's some i've worked with a lot of clients on that um even when social distancing isn't even a thing people are still going to be imagining germs everywhere um, so, mm -hmm. so for me, weirdly, you know, there, there's always opportunities from any kind of change. And, and I think, you know, a good business person just looks, you know, whether you use the word pivot or adapt, you know, it's about responding to where there's a need and, uh, and then making sure that you are known to be a solution for that particular problem, which, you know, so, it, you know, my business is going to be fine. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in, a, in, a, in a good position to take advantage of that. I mean, he's right too, because there are going to be so many addictions out there, you know, Zoom, addiction. <laughs> there might be addicted to Zoom, Zoom meetings. <laughs> yeah, right. I've had people, um, you know, ask about getting together. I'm like, you know what? We're good. We can just do this. Like, this is fine. We right. don't have to see each other in person right now. Um, it just is it's like, not have you to get dressed. In your house. I know I I have really kind of cocooned here. Um, oh, oh, there's a, there's a question. How did you feel when you put your jeans on? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So pretty much for the last six weeks, I've lived in sweatpants and yoga pants. So anything with an elastic waist. Um, but on Thursday, Thursday afternoon, I took Jay to the airport. So I put, I put a pair of jeans on um, to, you know, to leave the house. 
and and they fit like I was able to put them on and they fit and Jay's so sweet to me he says they actually look baggy I'm like you're Aww. lying you're lying but thank you <laughs> <laughs> that's what a good husband is supposed to say <laughs> um yeah and I actually kept them on the rest of the day like I kept them on so how did you feel driving because you haven't drove in six weeks either I hadn't I hadn't driven in six weeks I hadn't been really hardly out of the house I hadn't gone anywhere um, but I forgot to take a mask with me, so I couldn't stop, like, at the store. I couldn't go anywhere, because so I had to come straight home. And now I've got a sign. I've got a sign on the door that says, got mask, and then I also have one in the car, so that when I leave the house, because it's, it's just, it's just bizarre. It's just, it's just bizarre to be out and wearing a mask. I came home from the grocery store, and I told my, I told my family, I'm like, I'd rather just stay home and have it delivered than have to go through all of that. Like I know we here. went to um, the store the other day and I got a Swarovski Bay crystal mask um, sent to me and I had it on and I was like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. You have was- a Swarovski crystal face mask? Yes. And two people in the grocery store was like, oh my God, I love your mask. Angel, Angel, you're really surprised. Look at her background. I know, I know, but that they even have one, like that it even exists. I was super excited because Disney came out with their masks. And, they did. Um, I, you know, I was like, okay, all right, we can do that. But yeah, I know you've got some pretty fancy ones. We should have a little fashion show with your with your mask. I do. Yeah. I have a, I have one with the lips on it, biting your lip. You know, whatever. And I have a Chanel one coming. It's still coming. <laughs> still coming. It's still coming. Do you have any fancy masks, Warren? Um, I, have, I have people in my community that are, of course, are sending me octopus, you know, themed ones. Oh! They're like, has, any, has anybody thought about sending you an octopus one? I'm like, I've gotten like, you know, 50 or 60 messages from people. I'm going to have like this, this collection of them now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of weird too. And I always try to tell people, you know, what you could focus on is kind of just stay in your lane, you know, keep doing what you've been doing. Uh, you have, you have a gift, you have skills, like do not hyper-focus on, you know, this pandemic in a way that is taking you off in this really nihilistic direction. And I was like, because we need your talents, we need your gifts now more than ever. Um, and so every single time somebody tries to have, uh, it seems like that topic, you know, even before calls, you know, you have to- topic in the, the COVID takes over the conversation, almost like a virus. I'm like, we don't have to talk about it. <laughs> you know, we can, we can address it for a while. Um, but then it gets to the point where it's just like, okay, let's, let's get in and like, let's problem solve for, you know, what, what, what we're talking with. And so it's been really interesting for me just being like, okay, if this is the new normal, like how are we, how are we going to problem solve? Like, it's just like, let's just, you know, let's just figure this out. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I can't wait to see your, your um, mask too. Oh yeah. They're going to be amazing. They're going to be amazing. Adam, we're going to all have like little collection of masks from now on. <laughs> like we're going to have like seven or eight, like you have your glasses everywhere. We're oh, gonna yeah. have masks, like, That's everywhere. true. We are. We're going to have to have a collection of them. Well, I just have, I just have a generic one. I don't, I didn't, cause I don't leave the house. So it's no reason to get Angel anything fancy because she's not going anywhere. Um, even the events that are coming up, I keep thinking, well, maybe they'll just get canceled. <laughs> all, all of your listeners just heard that you don't have masks. So something tells me that uh, masks we're gonna are, masks get a, are we're on the gonna way. We're going to get a shipment of masks. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. So right? I don't need them. When I go out on the trail, I have just like a little, um, I don't know. It's, it, it, I don't, I don't know. It's like a bandana kind of thing that I can wear. I wear it around my neck and I put it up in case somebody looks at me weird for not having it on my, on my face, but huh. all right. Well, super fun. I'm super glad to have Adam Warren, our gentleman show. Right, and we actually have two gentlemen on the show tomorrow, so it's we like do. guys week. We have a big week ahead of us. <laughs> we have some big celebrities starting with Mondays. All these guys all week. We do, yeah. It's it's gen- it's it's gentlemen's week, so it is. This will be, be really fun. This will be this fun. Is, this is ladies' night with all the gentlemen <laughs> for the whole week. <laughs> This is all for our ladies um, audience. <laughs> all right, Miss Tina, tell, tell everybody what you're up to, what you've got going on. Oh, I have a busy week. I have my Turning Your Connections into um, Cash Flow webinar today at 2 p.m. Eastern. So I'm so excited about that. I have like 70 people registered. That's right? awesome, right? So right? I'm pretty excited about that. I wrote my first chapter of my hashtag next book this weekend. <laughs> Right. Um, 
um, what else? Did I, oh, I'm launching my course. So I'm still, I've been pushing it back and pushing it back and pushing it back. So it's launching. Um, I'm saying May 15th now. So. And that's just right around the corner. I know, right? Oh, this, it's the whole month amazing. of April has gone by so fast. So, yeah, there was a lot of things that I thought we would do, but then other things showed up, right, that I didn't think we would do, and we started those instead. And so, yeah, I think Lauren is right. I think there's just so much opportunity right now, and you you do your gifts, right? We mm -hmm. all have our own gifts, and there's so much opportunity for access and collaboration and connection, even more so than we thought we had before when we could go out and see each other all the time. Um, and I am. I've, I've, I've gotten used to my little, gotten used to my little cocoon. And so I'll right. probably be one of those slow rolloutters, you know, slow rollers. Well, you're supposed to be out there June 10th. So hopefully we will see you June 10th in Atlanta. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I've been, I've been telling my community too, like people like that you've always dreamed about collaborating with, you owe it to yourself to reach out to them to figure out what does that process look like? Because as of right now, there's a lot of big brands that are figuring out okay, if, if uh, there's all these community leaders that have dedicated communities that have these like big tribes, how can we work with them? Because they cater to a community. Like we have our existing community, but there's these community leaders out there that have these built-in tribes. So they're pouring a lot of money into, um, like I said, people that have these communities. So f reach out to them. You know, if you think it might be a good fit, um, they're definitely going to get back to you, right? Because they're working from home. They're, you know, they're trying to figure out what's next. And if you can deliver that campaign or that idea on a silver platter to them, um, then odds are they'll consider it and say, oh, you know, that's, you know, I don't know. It's just, you know, people that I couldn't get a hold of before are now like emailing me back the next day. So, you know, you owe it to yourself to figure that out. <laughs> that's a good thing. I need to start doing that. Yes, right. Connect and because we have access, and he's right. So take action, right? This is this is only Monday morning, right? We're all back in the office, even for those of us who took the weekend off. So, <laughs> um, yes, back back at it. I'm um, I'm Angel Tuzzi. I'm your media exposure specialist. Super excited to have you guys join us. We are the bright start to your morning. Um, we're we, we I think we have still a couple weeks where we're going to still be doing the show every single morning, and then we're going to scale it back to just once a week um, as we roll out, even though we're slow rollers, we're going to roll back out, but um, we're so excited. We're so excited for everybody who has joined us, who's participated, who's watched, who's been a guest on the show. I've got uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, I'm working with Sharon Lecter, the guru of financial literacy, the pioneer in financial literacy. And we're putting together an event called Assets Are Sexy, all about filling, kind of minding the gap, right, from in your financial wealth and financial literacy. It's on Friday, May 15th. So check it out on Eventbrite. Sharon Lecter is going to be one of our guests this week. She is going to be on this week talking about it. Yeah, you'll see a lot of that over, over the next couple of weeks. She's brought in some some high hitters of power uh, hitters yeah women that have run hundred that are running hundred million dollar companies so talk about building community right now let's take that up and and uh, make sure that you've got the financial literacy and the legacy financially behind that so I'm super excited about that assets are sexy.com um, and if you want your complimentary media guide on how to get even more exposure for your business book brand check us out at makeyourbigimpact.com and download your free complimentary your complimentary media guide at makeyourbigimpact.com. I'm so excited. I can't wait for the assets are sexy. I'm already registered. I'm Tina Torres, your client retention expert, otherwise known as the gratitude specialist, where I help you create clients for a lifetime, turn those clients into raving fans and increase your cash flow right now. And if you want to register for today's webinar at two o'clock, turning connections into cash flow. You can do that. Just DM me. I'll send you the link. Thank you guys so much for joining the Angel and Tina show. And also, if you can text the word connection to 26786, you can get your seven ways to increase your cash flow PDF. So we will be here every morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you, Adam and Warren. What amazing information we all got today. And we will see you guys tomorrow morning. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.